Senator Carper. Thank, uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. To, uh, to our witnesses, those that are here, uh, and those that are afar, uh, we welcome you. I just want to say to Chris uh, Krebs, on behalf of uh, many, many of us on both sides of the aisle, thank you for your leadership, for a job well done. Thank you for your courage to speak truth to power. Uh, Mr. Chairman uh, and colleagues, President uh, Lincoln once said these words. He said, if given the truth, the people can be depended upon to meet any national crisis. The great uh, point is to bring them the real facts. Those are his words. That's what uh, we in the Navy call uh, the straight skinny, the straight skinny. And uh, with all due respect, the American people have had the facts with respect to uh, the outcome of this election for some time now. The truth, the straight skinny, if you will, is staring us in the face. It may not be what President Trump and his supporters wanted, but Joe Biden and Kamala Harris received more votes than any ticket in American history. That's a success for, for our democracy. It's something we ought to be celebrating. A success made possible in the middle of an unprecedented pandemic, thanks to ordinary citizens who volunteered as poll, poll workers across the country. Many of them risked their own health to oversee a fair count, while hundreds of thousands of postal workers worked tirelessly to deliver absentee ballots. The U.S. Cybersecurity Infrastructure Agency, ably led by Chris Krebs, has called this election the most secure in American history. He's called it that again here today. And throughout uh, this country, courts have flat out rejected claims of elected irregularities. Conservative, conservative Trump appointed judges in state after state have dismissed the Trump campaign's claims, calling them baseless and worse. And let me just exact, uh, cite a, a couple of examples. In response to the legal challenge uh, from Trump, the Trump campaign in Pennsylvania, a federal judge appointed by President Trump and a longtime member of the Conservative Federalist Society wrote that, quote, charges of unfairness are serious, but calling an election unfair does not make it so. Charges require specific allegations and then proof. He went on to say, we have neither here, neither here. And one of the most strongly Word of opinions came from a Wisconsin State Justice who served as president of a chapter of the Federalist Society and his chief legal counsel, the former Republican governor, Scott Walker. Here's what he said. Something far more fundamental than the winner of Wisconsin's electoral votes is implicated in this case. He wrote, uh, in, uh, he, did, in, he wrote that in, in declining to hear a case asking the court to overturn the election results. This, and he went on to say this, at stake, is faith in our system of free and fair elections, a feature central to the enduring strength of our constitutional republic, close quote. And I, to, to that, I think we should all just say amen. We learned uh, this week that uh, the arguments from the Trump uh, legal team thus far have been defeated 59 times in, out of uh, 61 in state and federal courts, 59 times, including nine zip by the uh, Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court just last week. I'm wearing my uh, mask here from my alma mater, an undergraduate uh, at, uh, alma mater at Ohio State where I was a Navy ROTC midshipman. But if the football coach at Ohio State were to go uh, two and 59 uh, over a period of uh, four years, he would be fired. He would be fired. And in effect, that's what the voters of this country have done with our president, like it or not. Those 61 cases, at least 59 of them, were not close calls. In suit after suit across red and blue states, in opinions written by liberal and ultra-conservative judges, the Trump campaign's largely contrived allegations have been rejected. Four years after Donald Trump lost the popular vote by three million votes, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris won it by a whopping seven million votes. And they received 306 votes in the Electoral College just earlier this week, a margin described four years ago by candidate Trump as a landslide. But what if the, uh, the outcome uh, is not as definitive four years from now or eight years from now? What if? And with different judges on the bench, different candidates 
and a lot less integrity and courage from state and local officials. A defeated party might somehow be able to, to steal an election. It's been alleged here falsely. Think about that. It somehow might be able to steal an election. Friends, that ought to scare the, scare the hell out of all of us. Meanwhile, many of the president's supporters across the country continue to spread misinformation and for false allegations about the presidential election. The truth of the matter is in a lot of states, many of the voters who voted for Joe Biden for president turned around on their ballots and they voted on down ballot races to our chagrin as Delaware, as the Democrats, they voted Republicans. They voted for Republican in congressional races, in state legislative races, and more. You know what we call that in Delaware? We call it ticket splitting. It's as old as our democracy. It's not a conspiracy. It's plain and simple ticket splitting. We've done it before, and we're going to do it again. Let me go on to say that what we say in, in this committee and in this body matters. And if we continue to push what the courts have over time overwhelmingly called baseless claims of fraud, we not only risk permanent damage to our democracy, we also become complicit in threats and attacks against election officials and ordinary citizens. In Georgia, nonpartisan election te technicians have faced death threats simply for doing their jobs. The Georgia Secretary of State and his family have received death threats. Mr. Krebs, our witness here today, a Trump appointee has been bombarded with threats ever since an attorney for President Trump's campaign said on national TV, what did he say? He said, Krebs should be taken out at dawn in shock. And just this week, quote, credible threats of violence closed the Michigan State Capitol and electors in Pennsylvania needed law enforcement escorts when they went to cast their votes. This is not the America that our founding fathers dreamed of. This is shameful. Enough already. We have work to do to get America back on track, starting right here, right here in this Congress, in this House. All of us, Democrats and Republicans here in this body, need to do our jobs. And that's just the beginning. There are over 250 million Americans who need to be vaccinated there are millions of businesses that need a helping hand, tens of millions of students who need to be back in school getting an education, hundreds of thousands of hospital and nursing workers who just need a break. But it's gonna be hard to move forward as a country with dispatch or as a Congress until we accept the clear results of this election and turn the page. In 1787, colleagues, delegates from 13 colonies convened in Philadelphia to debate the future of our country. You know, they disagreed on a lot of things, but they all agreed on this. They didn't want a king. In responding to arguments for the Trump legal team in Wisconsin, a member of the state Supreme Court there echoed these sentiments. Recently when she said to them, quote, you want us to overturn this election so that your king can stay in power? That's un-American, close quote. And you know what? She was right, it is un-American. So Mr. Chairman and colleagues, when when the, Mr. Our chairman's not sitting here, he's about voting, but when uh, Chairman Johnson, when he became the leader of this committee in 2015, he pledged to run this committee, and I quote, with a spirit of bipartisan teamwork, respect, integrity, and professionalism. You know, that's been the uh, hallmark of this committee for years, for decades. And those words were reassuring to me. I know they were to our colleagues on this committee, to the staffs that we lead. And a few years later, when the chairman and I work together, introduce and enact the Bipartisan Presidential Transition Improvement Act, he said, can I quote, the peaceful transition of power from one administration to the next is the hallmark of our democracy, close quote. Those are words we hope and expect to hear from our leaders, words that appeal to our better angels, words that unite us, not divide us. And sadly, I fear that today's hearing may not be truly reflective of those words. I hope I'm wrong. But if I'm not, today's hearing could prove deeply disappointing to me and to the 330 million people that we serve across this nation. Let's not disappoint them. And as we continue with this uh, hearing today, I, I would just say to our, our chairman, uh, you ask uh, our witness to stand and take an oath to tell the truth. 
it's only fair for all of us to hold ourselves to the same standard. If our nation's leaders don't embrace the truth in our daily discourse, then we no longer have a democracy that will endure. Calling an election on fire does not make it so. And spreading misinformation in this committee or any committee doesn't just stay inside these four walls. I'll conclude with this. I began uh, my statement today with the words of Abraham Lincoln. I want to conclude it with the words attributed to Thomas Jefferson. Here's what he said. If the people know the truth, they won't make a mistake. If the people know the truth, they won't make a mistake. So let's tell them the truth. Let's tell them the truth today, tomorrow, and for generations to come. The truth will keep us free. The truth will keep us free. It always has, and it always will. Thank you.